Hello learners, when a salt dissolves in water, solution may be either neutral, acidic or basic. Certain salts like sodium chloride, potassium bromide form neutral solutions with water, whereas some salts like ammonium chloride, ammonium nitrate forms acidic solution, while some salts like sodium acetate and sodium carbonate form basic solutions with water. Today, we will study the pH of three different solutions namely sodium chloride, ferric chloride and sodium carbonate. Also, we shall study the effect of dilution on the pH of these solutions. The materials required for this purpose are, we will need a test tube stand, 9 test tubes, distilled water, measuring cylinder, pH strips, some glaze tiles, we will need 0.1 molar sodium carbonate solution, 0.1 molar ferric chloride solution, 0.1 molar NaCl solution, 3 separate droppers for using them, that is all. Let us begin our experiment by simply testing the pH for these solutions. Please remember the concentration of the 3 solutions we are using today is same, that is 0.1 molar each, freshly prepared solution. I will first use three pH strips, one for each solution. We shall dip them one by one in our three solutions respectively. Let us begin with sodium chloride solution and see the change in the pH paper if any. I am placing it. Now I will dip it in ferric chloride solution. The color changes to pink and in the third, that is sodium carbonate solution, the color changes to blue. Let us match these colors pH chart. As seen, the sodium chloride matches with the pH 6 to 7, whereas for that of ferric chloride, it is corresponding to the pink color indicating the pH to be 2. And for sodium carbonate solution, we can see it is corresponding to pH 10.5. So the 0.1 molar solutions of sodium chloride has pH 7, that of ferric chloride has pH around 2 and that of sodium carbonate pH around 10.5. What can we say about the nature of these solutions knowing their pH values? Well, the sodium chloride solution which has the pH of 7 is neutral in nature whereas that of ferric chloride which has a pH value of about 2 is acidic in nature and that of sodium carbonate which has a pH value of about 10.5 is basic in nature. Now, let us move on to the second part of our experiment that is to study the effect of dilution on the pH of these salt solutions. For the purpose of the same, we have already prepared three test tubes marked as test tube number one, about 10 ml of distilled water in test tube number one, 15 ml of water in test tube number two, 20 ml of distilled water in test tube number three. Now, we shall add 1 ml of the solution that is sodium chloride solution to these test tubes respectively. For this purpose, we are using a graduated dropper. Carefully avoiding parallax error, we shall take 1 ml sodium chloride solution or a fresh dropper. Pour one drop on the pH
of the sodium chloride solution on adding 10 ml of distilled water to it. In the similar fashion, we shall add 1 ml of 0.1 molar NaCl solution to our test tube number 2, which I have already prepared, and to the test tube number 3, which has been already prepared. Let us see the effect of change of dilution on the pH in case of test tube number 2 and test tube number 3. I wonder why. Yes, being a salt of strong acid and strong base, sodium chloride does not undergo hydrolysis and hence the pH of such salts remains unaffected. Let us now proceed with our second solution that is ferric chloride solution and study the effect of dilution on the same. For this purpose, again, we have prepared three test tubes. In test tube number one, we have taken 10 ml of distilled water and 1 ml of ferric chloride solution. In test tube number 2, we have taken 15 ml of distilled water and 1 ml of 0.1 molar ferric chloride solution. Similarly, the test tube 3 contains 20 ml of distilled water and 1 ml of 0.1 molar ferric chloride solution. We have shaken the test tube pink and orange. Let us match it with the pH chart. We can see that the solution which contained 20 ml of distilled water is corresponding to the pH of 4. That is, dilution has a role on the pH in case of ferric chloride solution. Let us now move on to our third solution that is sodium carbonate solution. Again, the steps are same. 10 ml of distilled water and 1 ml of 0.1 molar sodium carbonate solution. Shaken the test tube well, prepared the solution. Test tube 2, yes, 15 ml of distilled water and 1 ml of sodium carbonate solution. Test tube 3, 20 ml of distilled water and 1 ml of 0.1 molar sodium carbonate solution. Shake them then well.
and the color developed is slightly changed in this case when we match it on the pH strip the pH has changed from 10.5 and move on till pH 9.5 to 10 so the effect of dilution can be seen in the case of sodium carbonate solution also let us now match the pH chart to these colors developed and we can see that a basic stock solution that is 0.1 molar sodium carbonate solution had a pH of about 10.5 and gradually on dilution we have reached to the value of 9.5 to 10 for the sodium carbonate solution. So we can see on dilution sodium carbonate has changed in pH. Let us summarize what we have learned today. pH of different salt solutions is different. pH of some salt solutions like sodium chloride does not alter on dilution. It is a salt of a strong acid and a strong base and on dilution it does not show any change in pH. While in case of ferric chloride we have seen that it is an acidic salt as it may get hydrolyzed but on dilution it shows a change in pH right from 2 pH value of 2 to pH value of 4. For sodium carbonate we can say it is a basic salt as it is a combination of a strong base and a weak acid and on dilution it shows a change in the pH value from the value of 10.5 to the pH value of 9.5 that is the pH has decreased in case of sodium carbonate and it has increased in case of ferric chloride solution whereas it has not altered in case of sodium chloride solution. While conducting these experiments we have certain precautions to take or else it will result to sources of error. We should always use freshly prepared salt solutions. Concentration of salt solutions should be same that we are comparing. We should use separate clean test tubes for each solution. Store the pH paper at a safe and dry place and use separate droppers for separate solutions. I leave you here today with an exercise. Why are salts of strong acid and strong base not hydrolyzed? Why are ferric chloride and sodium carbonate solutions not neutral? And how is the phenomena of hydrolysis useful in salt analysis? Today we have learned how to determine the pH of different salt solutions and have also studied the effect of dilution on the pH of different salt solutions. I am sure you will be able to find the pH of some more salt and study the effect of dilution on their respective pH values. Thank you.